All right, hello everybody. Today we come to you as the richest group, and we are looking to work together with the bridge to re-enfranchise and re-inject homeless people in back into society. So homelessness in Dallas is a problem that has seen progress in the last few years, but has, but it, it still persists in in our society and in our community. Here's some of the. Uh, here it is by the numbers, as you can see, there's a total of 3,141 homeless people that were surveyed out of a total of 4,000 in the community. This survey was conducted by the Metro Dallas uh, Metro Dallas Homelessness uh, Alliance. It's been a, it's a six percent increase from 2014. Uh, there are 350 who reported to have been homeless for uh, for four more years. Uh, 1,305 uh, reported to be become homeless in the last. 12 months is why this, this is why you see the increase from 2014, and there are 615 who report themselves to be chronically homeless. Chronically homeless means they have something that's disabling them from re-entering re society, with them, but that is uh, they can't get a job, mental illness, and a whole bunch of other things. Uh, here are some of the biggest demographics of the homeless uh, homeless people in uh, in Dallas. As you can see, a large population of them are old. 13% uh, are reported to be veterans. 23% are children. And the, the large demographic is uh, black adults and black children. Now I'm going to pass it on to Mohio to talk to you about the problem that we're going to face specifically with this tent city. All right, so this is a tent city. Basically, it's a location on, under Interstate 45 outside downtown Dallas, and it's home to about 300 homeless people. The uh, population actually went from 71 to 300 since August, so in the past seven, eight months, it, um, the population actually quadrupled. Um, so basically, the rising population is leading to increasing crime rates. Um, there have actually been two killings in the past month, and uh, Dallas officials are closing, are actually meeting, and uh, considering closing Ten City, and uh, they have to make the decision by March 4th. Okay, so our organization is called The Bridge, and their mission is to end adult long-term homelessness in the Dallas area, and just help with the impoverished community there. And they do so in a number of ways. Uh, for healthcare, they provide a basic health um, treatment with their primary care physicians that they are partnered with, and they also offer clinics like substance abuse and drug abuse control uh, to help people help help them just get clean and sobered up. And then some ways they help with lifestyles is through employment. They offer resume writing and just helping people see what they're good at, what they enjoy doing, what they have a passionate skill for. So they help them find employment, and then they offer affordable housing. Uh, the bridge themselves doesn't offer the housing, but some of the partners that they are uh, in line with do. And so hopefully once they get employment, they can seek housing out in order to, like I said in their mission, get people off the streets. And one of our statistics here is they put people in 1,800 home placements since 2008. So that's a really good statistic there. And they are funded privately by individuals. So 50% of their funding comes from Dallas area and the county. 9% of it comes from the state of Texas and 41% of it comes from individuals like you and me and also from businesses in the area. So ways you want to help out are by volunteering your time or just making a monetary donation. Okay, so putting on the mayor's on is not, or reinforcing homeless people is not an easy thing, it costs money. You have to provide them with health care, you have to provide them with classes, you have to provide them with a whole bunch of things, and you have to provide services that allow them to come back into society. And the bridge cannot take the huge influx that's probably going to come from Kent City being closed down, especially when they're in a, such a close vicinity to the to the to the Kent City. So what we're proposing is doing a marathon to raise funds and using our skills as marketers as the Bridges Group to get a 100% uh, participation in our marathon and reach capacity to reach the necessary funds for them to deal with the people uh, from Kent City. So the marathon, we don't have a name for it yet, it's just the marathon right now. Uh, it would be a one-day event consisting of two parts, a marathon and a half marathon. Uh, those both, both marathons would consist of about 2,500 runners. We have some potential locations, which could be the Fair Park area, which is where Dallas, the Dallas Marathon takes place. We have Oak Cliff, because there's not a lot of businesses there, so it costs less money to rent out the streets. And then there's the Design District, which is a nice place to run through. Uh, the goals of the marathon are obviously to raise funds for the bridge so they can provide the necessary services to re-enfranchise these homeless people. Uh, these funds will be used to not only sheltering them, but putting back into society, which is the only way, the only real way to solve homelessness. Uh, it will be also to raise awareness in the community and to promote collective action to help these homeless people come back to society. 
if if we are able to re-enfranchise and re-inject every member of every inhabitant of Penn State, that would decrease the chronic homelessness in Dallas by almost 50%. I'm going to pass it on to Ian and Uka to tell you about our budget. Okay, uh, I'm going to talk about the uh, first part of how we're going to split the Marta, and then we're planning to uh, split it two part and. Uh, half marathon and uh, regular marathon, and we're gonna charge uh, marathon as a $80 for entry, and then half marathon for $50. So uh, it's gonna be 2,500 people for each group, and then we're planning to uh, collect income as $325,000. And then, yeah, Ian's gonna take over. Okay, um, so when throwing a really large scale public event like the one that we're doing, um, that's in like a really congested city like Dallas, one of the most important things that kind of determines the feasibility of the entire project is the budget. So we did go in you know, pretty big depth on what exactly, you know, like an itemized list. Um, so the first thing we have is advertising at $17,000. Now the next slide we'll talk about, we'll actually have a breakdown of what that actually means. Uh, for police traffic, we put it at 30 grand. Um, a lot of these basically numbers we got from past uh, marathons budget samples. Um, the 30 grand we came up with um, based on the amount of police we need and also how much it costs to kind of block off streets and stuff like that. Uh, it's like there's difference in prices where it's like uh, unarmed police officers versus armed and if they're off duty or off, you know, stuff like that. So 30 grand was a good estimate for what we got based on the amount of people that we're going to be having there. Uh, T-shirts, medals, timekeeping, that's going to be $11 per runner, which comes out to $55,000. T-shirts are about $6 a person. Uh, metals is just kind of the other stuff, would be like $2 a person, it's going to be $3, so um, they'll give you like a wristband or a bit, you know, an ankle bracelet that kind of keeps your time when you pass through both gates. Uh, refreshments, $3 a runner. Uh, insurance and first aid are going to be $3,000, $5,000 respectively. Audio, like PA systems, speakers like that, music, kind of entertainment, that's going to be about $5,000. Uh, one of the most important ones, uh, Port John's, $150 a runner, comes up to $7,500. Facility rental is going to be all the tables, tents, uh, barricades, stuff like that that we need to get. Um, that will come out to about 15000 And then the start and finish gates are going to be kind of elaborate just because it is you know, the big start and the big finish. So that setup can cost about six grand. Uh, bib numbers is that number that you put on your shirt when you're going to be running. It's 25 cents a person. Uh, banners and signage just for basically you know, to direct people and stuff like that. And then the professional consultation fees at $20,000, that's basically permits uh, people that we need to get in touch with to have a consultation about you know, the exact layout of everything and you know, just kind of all the professional side behind that. And then this is our advertising breakdown. Um, so what we want to do is, uh, television is not really our main outlet for advertising just because of you know, how it you know, has to be kind of a local station and the expensive you know, side of it. So we started off as 106.1 KISS FM. Um, I'm sure a lot of you guys listen to that in high school or probably still listen to it. That was going to be our basically number one source of advertising. Uh, now they do not have like a set advertising price, but based on the research I could find and what other people were doing, um, we're going to run a uh, ad for about a month. Um, it's going to run weekly and it's going to be about $3,000 for a week, so it's going to be 12 grand. Uh, the next one we're going to do is we're going to advertise in the newspapers two months prior to the event uh, in the Dallas Morning newspaper. Uh, so we decided that an advertisement would be sufficient at 25 pigas wide, which is four and a half, about four and a quarter inches, and then eight inches. Uh, so it's 34 column inches, and then based on an annoying amount of research that I had to do to get these numbers, we came out to about $3,200 for uh, the, right, the, the raw price, but they do give discounts based on how much time you commit to. So we budgeted that at 3000 and then the rest of the money in the budget, which is going to be $2,000, is going to go towards making flyers that we will pass around to businesses in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. And then, uh, obviously, a lot of cars are going to go towards social media advertising just because it's free. So uh, we come up with the uh, income as, in, uh, as $325,000 and then from the budget that uh, Jan researched, and it took up one, uh, $182,075,000, I mean $182,750. So we expected raising money as $100,000. $42,250, so um, uh, Kevin's going to take a look. Okay, so homelessness is not a problem that can be solved by individuals. It takes community effort, and by working on the bridge, it's probably the most uh, comprehensive corporate or organization that is actually trying to help these homeless people not only have a shelter, but to come back and be uh, contributing members to society. These are some of our sources. If you have any questions, thank you. Thank you.